keeping you up to date. This is 96.5 Bolted FM. Going back to the 80s. Well, we're back again for another Saturday night for 1980s music, taking you back to the best decade ever. This is Kev Gurney's Club Tropicana, Bolton FM. Guests coming up on the show tonight, we've uh, got Thomas Dolby coming on live around about 7.30 this evening. Okay, in the studio with me at the moment, the boys from Electro 80s. Guys, thanks for coming in. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks Hello. for inviting us up. So, let's get the important thing out of the way first. You're coming to Bolton, not once, but twice this year. Twice this year, that's right. We're at um, Hennigan's, the Bolton Bull, in Bury Road. That's uh, Friday the 19th of October. Right. And then in December the 30th, we're at Moses Gate. I think that's under Farnworth, I think it is, isn't it? It is, that is Farnworth. So, you're going to be coming up, you're going to be doing 80s, obviously. Now, am I alright calling you guys an 80s tribute band? Is that is that an acceptable term for what you do? I, th- I think so. It, we're not a tribute to a specific band, but we're a tribute to like a genre of music, uh, electronica in particular, all the new wave stuff from the early 80s. We like to steer away from the kind of cheesier side of the 80s and and go with the the bit that people would prefer to remember the decade. Oh, I'm for. not I'm not going to be hearing you doing sort of wake me up before you go go or hey Mickey not, or anything. Definitely like that. not. It's uh, Newman, uh, Kraftwerk, OMD, Human League, Depeche Mode, things like that. And the Pet Shop Boys. And uh, and apparently yeah. The the Shop Boys. <laughs> there you go. Just grab the uh, grab the two albums. It is indeed on the album uh, Neon Shadows. Last track on the On Shadows, uh, Opportunities by the Pet Shop Boys, that's on the Electro 80s album. Electro 80s is going to be popping up here and there on the show right through the evening, uh, talking about the take on all things 80s, and uh, talking a little bit about some gigs that they've got coming up around the area as well. Now, of course, as well as the two Bolton gigs, you've got a gig coming up in Crewe, a little bit south of, of here, but you've got you've got <coughs> coming up at the, the Box in Crewe. That's correct, yeah. Um, with a very special guest star. Yeah, we've got Steve Strange from Visage. Uh, he's coming doing a couple of songs. Yeah. So we've also got Scorby, that. haven't we? And we've got a friend called Scorby. He's about uh, industrial synth. Right. Is that how you'd call it? Yeah. yeah. Industrial side, about a Gary Newman ish style. You know. The new this. Newman. The new Newman. Yeah. The new Gary Newman style. We, we'll do the old Newman, he can do the new <laughs> Newman. <laughs> And it's a great venue as well, the box. It's a fantastic venue, and it's it's quite a, it's quite an honour to actually perform with Steve Strange. We've been paying tribute to it, uh, his his music and others like him for so long now, and to actually be be on stage with him is yeah, it's it's a real honour, isn't it? He's an icon, isn't he? Yeah, I think you need to get a bigger stage, probably. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, with the three of you on, and then Steve and his uh, his charisma on stage, I'm not sure there's going to be enough room for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, one of the questions I asked was why um, they've named themselves Red Electro, Green Electro, and Blue Electro. Uh, and this was the answer. Yeah, well. Well, we y- did all want red shirts to start with. Yeah, we, we do have a, a fancy technical explanation <laughs> that we like to give out, and it's based on e- electronics, you know, RGB, the, the colours right. in the electronic spectrum. But really, the, the truth is, <laughs> is that we all wanted to look like craft work on stage with the red, tie, uh, red, red shirts and, and black ties. So when we went to buy them, they only had one red shirt left. So blue here, as he's now known, <laughs> wouldn't wear a green shirt because he likes rangers. <laughs> so, I so, with the green one. so green was lumbered with the green shirt, and, and it literally has evolved from not being able to find three red shirts, and it's stuck with us. People actually just know us as red, yeah. green, and blue. Don't yeah, they? it's weird. <laughs> I can't imagine being any other colour either. So there you go. That's the boys from Electro Eighties. Now on the phone, with me. Hopefully, with my fingers crossed, we should have Mr. Thomas Dolby. Hello again. In a, in a much better uh, sounding area for your mobile signal as well, so thanks for that. Thanks for that. Um, so, well, we were talking about what you'd, uh, what you'd gone and, and done since the 1980s. Yeah, so, uh, so in the 90s I started a tech company in Silicon Valley, and um, we made interactive music uh, software, and uh, it ended up being the driver in, in about 3 billion mobile phones. Oh, right, so okay. it's basically we made the synthesizer that makes the ringtones and other sounds in the phone. Um, is it? I know that um, having having read up on you a little bit, the, the the Dolby part. I mean, have you you've obviously been interested in the technology behind behind the music? You, you mean you you obviously you picked a name that's synonymous in the eighties and, and before with the processing of audio and that kind of thing. Was that a conscious a conscious thing? 
Well, I mean, Dobby is a nickname when I was at school, um, and I was sort of landed with it. And, uh, you know, my first name at school was Tom, so I was Tom Robertson, and there was a Tom Robinson out there yeah. who was a rocker, and um, so it didn't make much sense. And so I went with my nickname. Um, so, I mean, was, yeah. is, that, that's where, is that where the Dolby part of it came from? Is that, were you in Well, that, that, was, kind of that was a nickname, yeah, because I, I had a tape machine that I was always fiddling around with, and so they called me Dolby, because Dolby was sort of synonymous with uh, high-end audio at the yeah. time. So that's it. If you had a cheap stereo, you just had a loudness button. Um, yeah. To, uh, to just make the music louder and the, the hiss um, quieter. But of course, you remembered for the um, the, the, the AC song, She Blinded Me With Science. Um, and in a way, I mean, did, did that song become a little bit of a, a kind of a millstone around your neck? Did, did people just want to hear that song? Well, not really, because actually, I mean, you know, that, that was uh, only about my third highest charting song in the UK. Um, and so I think here there was a little bit more of a sense that, that you know, I had more strings to my bow. Uh, but anybody in the know knows that, that I'm a producer also. Um, I produce people like um, Johnny Mitchell and Prefab Sprout and George Clinton and so on. And as a keyboard player, I've played with lots of different people. Um, so, so I think people realize that, that you know, um, there's, there's sort of more, more depth to me than that. And in fact, you know, having hits has actually enabled me to reach a, a, an audience who have discovered the the more sort of personal side to what I do. Mm. I must admit, I only, I only found out today one of my favourite um, songs from the 80s, a very kind of atmospheric opener, which is uh, Foreigner Waiting for, uh, Waiting for a Girl Like You. Now, I believe you were responsible for the synth, the, the opening bars of that, that song, the kind of the very atmospheric bit at the beginning. Yeah, and actually, I mean, the band, you know, they were sort of known as, as more of, a, of a, a rock band, really, and, and this is about the first ballad they'd ever done. And they left, just, just left me alone in the studio. I was like 20 years old and I flew to New York and they said, they just left me up all night in the studio and said, here's eight tracks to fill up, do what you like. And uh, I was always a big fan of Eno and his ambient music uh, mm. before it was remotely mainstream. And um, so I, I thought I'd make a sort of an ambient intro. And uh, I mean, it's, it's quite subversive really for the time, especially when the, hit became, the song became a big hit on sort of middle American radio. So I mean, what, what are you up to these days then? Um, well, I made a new album, uh, the first in 20 years, and it's called A Map of the Floating City. And uh, I moved back from California to the UK about four years ago. And um, I, built, I live on the coast in, in Suffolk. Um, and I built myself a studio in the garden in a converted 1930s lifeboat. Right. And it's, it's powered by um, solar panels and, and a wind turbine up the mast. So it's completely uh, renewable energy powered. And that's where I do my work. And I put out an album called The Map of the Floating City uh, just over a year ago. Right, okay. So, I mean, you, you are still... You say that you're not, you, you don't want to be the person on stage performing songs, but, I mean, do you go out and you do, the, do, you do these songs um, around and about? Or is it, just, is it something that you're doing just for your own sense of satisfaction, if you like? No, I mean, I've toured, I've toured a lot in the States. I mean, the States is, is where I'm sort of best known, really. Um, but uh, I've toured a bit in the UK as well, and you know, I played in Manchester and Liverpool at the end of last year, and uh, you know, a few places up and down the country. And is there going to be any uh, going to be any more performances coming up in the uh, the near future? Well, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I did I did a couple of summer festivals, I did Latitude and Maverick in the summer, and uh, I'd like to do more of that. And um, you know, I'm really enjoying being back um, back on stage. Uh, you know, in, in a strange way, like when I left the UK in the 80s, it was a very snotty time, you know, it was mm. the, the, the heyday of NME, who slagged off everything under the sun. And um, even artists, even musicians were quite hostile towards each other. And having lived away from the country and come back 20 years later, A, the atmosphere, I think, is a lot friendlier in the UK, and there's more diverse music going on. And B, you know, I think being a little bit older, people are a bit more respectful, you know, that it's not so... You know, they're not so determined to sort of pick holes in you and um, and find fault with you, and it's not so tribal anymore. Uh, I think people appreciate the um, you know the, the the fact that I go about things in a different way, the sounds and and uh, you know that, that you can hear a Thomas Dolby song from any any period, and it's going to stand out because I, I sort of go against the stereotype. So there's a few you know sort of uh, climaxes really to the 80s from my point of view, and I just I, I love playing with a variety of different people. I mean, you know. When I went off and played with, you know, George Clinton and, and Parliament Funkadelic or co-producing Joni Mitchell, each time you take on something like that, it forces you to dig deep and find a different aspect of yourself, you know, um, and keep reinventing yourself. And so um, I, I was really pleased with, with, with it as a decay because I covered a lot of ground. Is there anybody currently 
sort of you know the, the current crop of of chart acts that you've heard and thought you know I'd really like to produce produce those or I'd really like to write and you know for those for this this artist is there anyone that that you you that you respect at the moment? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a few bands that I like um, out there. You know, I like um, Darwin D's, I like Friendly Fires, uh, bits and pieces, uh, Athlete I like. There's sort of different bits and pieces of stuff that I like. I'm not really a big music punter, though, really. I don't I don't go out of my way to discover new music. Uh, I tend to pick stuff up that, that will come blaring out of my kids' bedrooms and things, <laughs> and I'll stick my head around the door and go, what's that? You know. And um, so I pick up bits and pieces. Do your kids realise, you know, what an influence you've, you've been over the, the years to a lot of other musicians? Or do they just, no. is it just dad, dad goes and sits in his boat all day and makes a racket? Um, I think when my kids were small, one of them actually said, told another kid in the playground that his dad was a magician. <laughs> um, you know, because I mean, at the time I was working in an office every day at my tech company, and so I don't think my kids realised what it was that I did, but they came to appreciate it over the years. And, you know, one of my kids who's 16, Graham is a drummer, and he actually came on the road with us in the States um, earlier in the year and uh, sat in on drums on a couple of songs and he had his own fan club and his own sort of <laughs> Facebook page. Uh, it's nice when, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that my, I've got a six month old uh, baby I'm, I'm kind of, I'm teaching him a little bit of radio, you know, so he can, uh, he can follow in his dad's footsteps in, in sort of, you know, 20 years science. So it'll be nice well, to see that great. Well, up. let's hope the radio's still around in 20 years. <laughs> yeah, well, this, this is it, you see, there'll, there'll always be music, um, but whether yeah. or not radio will be there playing it or whether people will just have, you know, their iTunes collection. Is, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think people people like tastemakers, you know, like yourself. They like they like to be uh, given a sort of concise, like a, a you know, a roundup of stuff that they should be listening to. And I think that's very worthwhile. I'm actually um, planning on doing a series myself uh, on on radio about electronica um, early next year, um, which will have a bit of musicology, you know, a bit of sort of gearhead talk on it as well. And uh, that should be very interesting. Ironically enough, I actually had in the, in the studio during the week. I had um, three guys who are in, they're in a band called Electro Eighties. Who are they call themselves a tribute? I think they're a little bit more than a than a tribute. But they they specialise in going out and, and recreating um, electronic music of the of the eighties. And your name was actually mentioned as someone who'd influenced them um, during the the formative years, um, along with the likes of um, Martin Ware of Heaven Seventeen and and the Human League kind of sound and. Your, as I say, your name was mentioned as an influence um, to them that got them doing music. Um, yeah, well, that, 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 that's really nice when you hear stories like that. Um, the irony of it is, I think it was actually Phil Oakey from uh, Human League told me that uh, you know they were on tour in the States and they rolled into a small town looking, you know, looking for the address on the street where the gig was, mm. and they saw like a marquee with a, a line around the block in front. They said, "Oh, there it is," and somebody said. No, that's the fabulous 80s night. We're across the street, and there's like outside their <laughs> theater, there's two guys in anoraks, you know, <laughs> hanging out to see Human League, and there's lots of hot secretaries queuing up to go in and see the fabulous 80s night. Yeah. So, well, this is it. I mean, it's the 80s, and I know that obviously you've, you've carried on working and you, you're making new stuff, but I mean, the 80s, certainly in the UK, is a, it's still it's a, it's, it's having its day again, I suppose. It's, um, there's a lot of people with a lot of happy memories. You be, and you're obviously part of part of those those memories whether people know it or not um you know you've, you've been involved in a lot of the music that was around then um your own stuff and other people's so um i'm glad that you're uh, you're still making music and it would be an uh, absolute honor if we can get a couple of your tracks from the new album it would be an honor to play them on the show um, yeah but yeah. Uh, but listen it's been great to speak to you very good but uh, have a great night tonight mate and um it's been a pleasure to speak to you all right thanks kevin thanks See a lot mate bye bye so anyway, Electro 80s, um, and the fact that when they play Crew next week, they've got a very special guest with them. Who's on the phone with me now? Mr. Hey, Kev, Mr. how are you? Mr. Strange, it's good to speak to you. I understand you had Mr. Dolby on before me as well. <laughs> yeah, twice, because he was, I don't know where he was, but he was in a really, really bad area for mobile phones, so he had to go and wander around outside the, uh, he's doing a charity gig, and he was wandering around outside trying to find a... Oh, it's better than me being on a train locked inside a toilet talking about phone sex. I tell you <laughs> what, all the them listeners are thinking, what the hell, because they're on the, tri on the train thinking, what the hell, <laughs> Steve Strange doing in a toilet talking about phone sex. <laughs> but um, if you'd have phoned me, it literally, about, oh, I don't know, four minutes ago. We were just putting the finishing touches because I'm with Mr. Barnacle from, who was one of the original members of Visage, putting the finishing touches. We're basically picking out of 16 tracks. We're condensing them down. I know we're obviously 
we're putting them finishing touches to them before they go off to the real, uh, real drummer and the real guitarist I mean we're doing it sort of vice versa um, but a song that we've just done called Love and Logic um, which is which I've written today and we finished another one yesterday uh, called Breathe Air which is really beatlesque and very very catchy right. but um yeah so really exciting things at the moment and also i've, I've had a pretty, pretty shitty month to be quite honest in the sense of uh well i told you last time i was on with me leaving the detroit stars yep. and it was but basically it was like i just just don't like misleading the fans and so i got really really upset when things were put on up on on iTunes and um, like saying that you know it was partly me and Lot. Keeping you up to date. This is 96.5 Bolted FM. Going back to the 80s. Into the final hour of the show, Kev Gurney's Club Tropicana, the best of the 80s, right through till 10 o'clock every Saturday night. This is Kev Gurney's Club Tropicana, Bolton FM. Now, now we've been talking to the guys from Electro 80s there at the Boxing Crew next Saturday night, and they will also be up in Bolton. They've got a couple of nights in Bolton, and remember that they're here on the 30th of December. If you're looking for something to do for a little bit of uh, pre New Year's Eve entertainment, uh, we'll get you all the details for that, or you can go to www.electro80s.com and check them out. Back in the 80s, um, and I'm sure that uh, people who were, you know, stars at that, uh, you know, that sort of time, look back. At pictures of themselves now and thinking what was I thinking of wearing that Martin Kemp for instance uh, just been on side with his big brother must look back at some of the Spandau Ballet videos and think well, why was I wearing that kilt got to but so we asked the guys from uh, Electro 80s whether or not they'd ever done the makeup and the frilly shirts but stuff back in the 1980s not not uh, the not the makeup uh, but uh, I did, I did you were right that didn't you I did wear a pair in that yeah Oh, you did? Yeah, I did a couple of times. I did dye my fringe blonde once. Yeah? Yeah, but it was like... It was a blonde Phil Oakey, I do. <laughs> and I got sent home from school. We've been talking Electro 80s tonight. Uh, if you can't make it down to one of the gigs, if you can't get down to the box next Saturday or to one of the Bolton gigs, you can get yourself on a little bit of Electro 80s to listen to at home. We, we did two albums. We did a, Our first album was called Souvenir, uh, basically be named after the OMD track of the same name, but also it'd be a souvenir from the gigs. That yeah. was our original intention, to sell it just purely at the gigs. Uh, and that is kind of more mainstream, and it was very successful. We sold it on the website as well, and it's, it's done well. But our second album, Neon Shadows, was a look at the darker side of the 80s, wasn't it? Uh, and we, that is really kind of our niche. Uh, we, we, that's what we enjoy listening to the most, and that's what we recreate the best. Uh, it's got things on it like being boiled. It's got... Uh, I never actually listened to that CD. Sound, so finished sound of the crowd. And then I listen to it, and I just... I run, I'm upset. It's awesome. It's just, that's how we should be all the time. Yeah. We knew because it was just it was fantastic. I think it's yeah. brilliant. Souvenir was actually. I know I'm in it, but I still think it's brilliant, don't we? Yeah, because there's so much happening mm. at the time. We rushed the fall for you. Too much. We rushed that uh, souvenir to to thing in much bigger. Did you have a ghetto blaster during the 1980s? Big boombox. Yeah, you're <laughs> walking along with uh, you know with. I couldn't afford one. I, I, I couldn't <laughs> afford one either. But what I used to have is, do you remember the the, the single cassette like set cassette recorder, the flat ones? Yeah. Uh, uh, and later they started like connecting them up to computers to use them as storage, didn't they? I remember getting one of them off my auntie, and that's actually, funnily enough, what got me into music, because I had a little keyboard, like just like a home keyboard thing, and one of these tape record, well, two of the tape recorders actually, and I used to record onto one, then play it back while recording on to the other right. and I was yeah, kind of like doing my own multi-tracking without knowing and that's how I got into it and the more I wanted the sounds to get better so I was saving up for synthesizers and that yeah. so I mean I should actually buy myself a ghetto blaster with the gigging money seeing as I couldn't afford one back then <laughs> if you're going down to the box next week uh, next Saturday to see Electro 80s and Steve Strange then have a great night going back to the 80s this is Kev Gurney's Club Tropicana Bolton FM <laughs>